Okay, so the article I'm reading from is from the last word on sports.com. Okay, and uh, let's see, the, the, the kid's name is Grayson Sauchin. I believe that's how it's pronounced. I, uh, I watched a highlight video of the kid, and he seems definitely, uh, what I tweeted out was he definitely reminds me of many of the Florida Panthers' recent forward draft picks, which is he looks like a men among boys, right? He looks like he's got a lot of elite puck movement skills, toe drag release. He looks really, really good, but he is not big. Now, he's 5'11", and depending on what you read, 157 pounds or 165 pounds. Now, I grasp the fact that a lot of these kids don't weigh a whole lot. That, you know, that, that's, that's fine. They got to fill out. Sometimes they do fill out. Look at the size of Owen Tippett now. Sometimes they don't fill out. Look at Henrik Borgstrom. Henrik Borgstrom could never really fill out and never really amount to anything. So, uh, but looking at his, looking at his highlights, he definitely, he's certainly not afraid to go to the net hard he's not afraid to get to the dirty areas uh, i don't you know he's only 18 so you're definitely looking at a few years of development he's got to put at least 20 pounds on yeah i mean 157 that that you, you got to at least get the 175 180 okay i mean for perspective i'm five six 180 pounds i ain't exactly you know i'm not exactly you know a monster over here so all right so i'm going to read what we've got here Okay, this again is from lastwordonsports.com. So Sachin was born in Alberta in 2000, 2005. He's, now this says he's 5'11", 165 pounds. Okay, last season Sachin played with the U.S. National Team Development Program's under-17 team. So this is probably an older, an older scouting report. In fact, let me see when this was put out. Uh, June 21st, 2023. So I guess that's not older. Okay. So last year he played with the U.S. National Development Program's under-17 team. There he scored 10 goals, 23 assists for 33 points in 52 games. After that season, he made the decision to go back up north to the WHL. In his first season, he managed to produce 18 goals and 40 assists for 58 points in 58 games. That production with the Seattle Thunderbirds may not seem impressive, but outlets liked his game. Sachin has drawn eyes from some notable sites as a first-round talent. Others are lower, including several third-round rankings. Those rankings include being placed 13th by Elite Prospects, 21st by Schmott Scouting, 28th by Recruit Scouting, 29th by Dauber Prospects, 31st by Draft Prospects Hockey, 35th by Hockey Prospects Radio, 37th by Daily Faceoff, 38th by Flow Hockey, 41st by McKean's Hockey, 45th by FCH Hockey or FC Hockey, 47th by Craig Button, 80th by Bob McKenzie, and 90th by the Hockey News. And we took them, I think we had the 63rd pick. I think that's what it was, the 63rd pick. So fact that he was still there according to what a lot of people thought was actually pretty good with the solid but not outstanding production where will Sachin land and last words recent 2023 mock draft he landed at 33 with the Anaheim Ducks with McKenzie being very low and Button placing him in the early to mid second round he likely stands somewhere between 40th and 70th perfect it all comes down to preferences so why would team why would some teams fall in love, and why might others turn away? Sachin's skating is decent. He's not a burner who makes a big impact just with his feet. His top-end speed is strong, but he doesn't possess that extra gear to burn defenders wide. Sound like Matthew Kachuk, right? His acceleration is good. He can generate a bit of power off his first step, but again, it's only above average in this class. He needs to work moving forward. Possibly his weakest attribute is his skating or his edges. He doesn't have the ability to complete tight turns without losing speed. He can get caught taking wide and slow turns at times. 
Additionally, while his crossovers aren't bad, they don't generate a lot of speed at this point. Working on his edges and ability to change directions with the play while also becoming a more powerful skater off his crossover or otherwise will go a long way. All right, so he needs to work on his skating. He's 18, right? Okay. In the offensive end, Sashin can certainly flash skill. His creativity and stick handling pop off the page, showing an ability to get himself out of tight checking situations. With the puck, he loves attacking the slot areas. He can skate off the boards and gain the slot consistently. That uncanny ability to attack those high danger areas shows a high confidence level and awareness. That is definitely something I saw on film. Additionally, he constantly looks to find teammates in the slot area. That vision is important, and again, the confidence is evident, but he doesn't connect on those passes consistently, and a lot of the time he turns the puck over. That is definitely something I saw in his highlight film. Um, multiple times he was coming down the wing, he had the puck, and he would look like he's going to go hard to the net, and he kind of would, and then he would dish the puck off. Um, very similar to uh, what we would see Jonathan Huberto do. Now, I'm not calling him an elite pass passer, but in terms of his tendency, it seems as though that might be something he prefers to do. Which, if he's going to be a Panther forward that we draft, he has to prefer to pass first, right? <laughs> as for his shooting, Sachin doesn't have a threatening one at this point. The power is lacking, and he isn't consistently accurate. As for his shot selection, he, au he often looks off a shot at times for a more difficult pass. <laughs> Sounds like Huberto. Learning to shoot more while bulking up and working on power behind his shot will help his playmaking game become more unpredictable and dangerous. Away from the puck, Salchin is solid. He can, at times, find open lanes to give his teammates an option, but due to his smaller frame and lighter build, it's not often he'll get, he'll get to the middle. Again, bulking up will likely help him gain some more confidence to attack the slot away from the puck more often. This is a long article. This is this is a deep dive. This is this is good. I need to take a sip of water then. Sachin, uh, they're talking about his transitional abilities. Sachin is an excellent transitional player when it comes to transporting the puck from the defensive zone all the way to the offensive zone. He's one of the best. Seattle knows it as they constantly let him take the puck up ice leading his line, his creativity and stick handling plus willingness to attempt difficult passes shines through. His vision with the puck absolutely shines through. When he doesn't have the puck, he puts himself in good spots to receive a pass. That helps with his involvement, as his line mates often look his way. With the IQ, stick handling, confidence, and creativity are all put together and wrapped up with efficiency and consistency, that's important to remember, especially considering that's what he's missing in the offensive zone at this time. His defensive zone play. Sachin is pretty effective in his own end. Though he is on the smaller side and struggles along the boards, he's still quite efficient. That's something I did, like I said, I, from what I watched, he's not afraid to go to the dirty areas. That's for sure. His positioning is mostly solid, though he can get caught chasing on occasion. Uh, like all young players, right? The biggest thing, however, is his motor. He hounds the opposing puck carrier and utilizes an active stick to break up chances. That motor and willingness to play at a high level in his own end will be taken by will be taken well by NHL coaches. This guy sounds like somebody that uh, Paul Maurice would love. Sticking with that motor, he forechecks like his life depended upon it. Additionally, if the opposition is looking to enter the offensive zone, he does a good job keeping the play in front of him and acting as an extra defender at times. Additionally, he tries to play bigger than he really is. However, he needs to bulk up more to be more effective, and that includes his defensive game and forechecking. All right, so I like this. Last couple things. Uh, his potential. Sachin's four checks hard, tries playing a physical game as one of the better transitional players in the class, and has an intriguing offensive skill set. At this stage, his offensive game doesn't have a lot in the way of translatability to the NHL level. 
His playmaking is too high risk and inconsistent to comfortably say he can translate that aspect to a higher level. Plus, his shot is lacking at this point, and he needs to add that to his arsenal. However, his puck moving ability and strong defensive game all his strong defensive game all point towards a future in the NHL. As it stands right now, he looks like the type to play up and down a lineup and find success. His 200-foot game and high-paced playmaking could work in a top six role, though he'll likely be only a complementary piece. He could still be a third line, solid third line option and one of the better forward line options league-wide in the future. NHL comparison. Uh, comparing Sachin to an NHL player based on style and, proje- and not a projection of skills, he's reminiscent of P.J. Peugeot. Peugeot is a strong defensive zone presence with a high-end motor that can cause issues for his opponents. Peugeot also possessed a high hockey IQ and was solid transitionally. While Sachin has more raw talent than Peugeot displayed, the questions surrounding the translatability of his offensive game make it interesting. Okay.